So tell us turn to uh, Psalms 84. Okay, Psalms 84. Why do God, does God gather people? Why, what is the need of a gathering? Okay, I'm talking today about just what we call uh, the, the power of gathering. What do, why should we gather together? Why is God wanting us to, to gather together during this uh, conference? Amen. It's so important that we be able to come together in this conference. But why does God gather together as this conference? Amen. So we want to read Psalms in the fall, quickly Psalms in the fall. And I want us to read when we are standing. Amen. Today was a day for testimonies. In the fall, Psalms in the fall. Okay. Somebody has it, read, read it loudly, all of us. Then he, how? But one thing is needful, and the mother has chosen that which good part, we shall not be taken away from her. We are looking forward to a period which is very special in the calendar of this church and our tradition. As our church, every year we have a period of seven days when we come and stay in the church. And we stay and wait before God in the house of God. And we call it Eternity Times Conference. It is a time when God gathers us together that we may come in His presence. And it is a time of just being in His presence. And that is what it speaks in Psalms in the fall. 
how admirable are the tabernacle of God. God wants us to come into his presence. We God gives us 52 Sundays, and God is asking us one uh, one who gives us for two weeks, and is asking us just to devote him one week when we shall be here from Monday to Sunday. Waking up here, reporting here. I know every day you report to your place of work. But can you imagine every morning for one week reporting here? Every day, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. A time when you close your phone, when your phone is off, and you are just in the presence of God. This is what happened to Mary. The Bible says, when Jesus came, Mary went to serve. But Mary realized, it is my time I to sit in the feet. I want to sit in the presence of God. And the mother was concerned. And she was everywhere doing everything. But Mary stayed in the feet of Jesus. And she came complaining and said, tell her to come and help me. And Jesus said, Mother, mother. Yeah. When somebody says twice, it's an emphasis. Mother, mother. You are concerned about many things. But one thing is needed. And this is what Mary has chosen. And this is sitting in the feet of Jesus. It is so important as we are now planning this conference for you to make a choice. And they say, I want to dedicate my seven days before God. I want to sit at the feet of Jesus. Now, can you imagine, since we declare this conference, we have got men and the women of God who have been preparing themselves to bring the presence of God here. Some of them, God has prepared them as far as away as America. And they have been praying from the month of January when I told them to come. They have been praying and preparing themselves to come. But when they arrive here in the, air, in the airport, you will go away. Can you imagine how, how unkind it will be? They have arrived for us, but we will not be there. Okay? We will be busy, like chicken, scratching everywhere. Okay? But God wants us to come in His presence one day, by seven days. You know, it is so interesting with the Christians that they, can, they don't even go to pilgrimage. You find the Muslim once a month, once a year, they go to Mecca, isn't it? They close their businesses, they close their business, and they go to, to, to that place where they give their God gifts. Okay? But what about us? That once a year, you can close your issues, you can close many things, and just come in the presence of the Lord and stay there for seven days. This is part of us. This is part of our culture as a church, as a practice. We believe, we know that God wants us. One day, all those businesses will not be there. Jesus will come and take us in our end to eternity. And because of that, we believe one day, our businesses, our life will end and we shall be in eternity. And we always believe that once a year, we need to dedicate one week when we should come in the presence of God and wait there. And let me tell you, this week is a, that week is a very sacred week. It's a week when we come and we wait here. It's a week once a year when ourselves as a family we don't cook breakfast at all. Amen? Because we come here. I remember all those years we will say the, the kitchen is closed. So every morning we are here with the delegates. We must take breakfast together. We must eat together. We must stay together here and eat evening. Hallelujah. It is why, why is it like this? The Lord wants us to come and a sit in his presence. Mother lost an opportunity. Mother lost an opportunity. And she lost it forever. And even you, people who come from South Africa, they will bring a good word. They will bring the presence of God here. And you shall lose an opportunity 
because of your busy schedule that will never end. Do you know one guy, one day, eh? one person one day, he was on his journey and he was crushed by a car and the head was cut off. And the head was talking alone, the head alone. He was going to say, man, the head was talking about the mission he was going to do in town. But it was the life of no man. That sometimes we can be so preoccupied with the things of this world that we don't have time for God. And I know you come here every Sunday. And some of you have become what we call Sunday morning Christians. In other words, you are only found in church on Sundays. By the way, there are no places which is written should be already found in church on Sunday. Okay? The early church was, was meeting in the church every day. They were in the church every day. And the people who come to church every day grow more spiritually than those people who come on church on Sunday. And God is inviting us in these seven days to come in His presence. Look at the Exodus 17. Uh, 9 to 13. This is one of the things the Lord gave me about Moses. And Moses also was in the presence of God. Okay? Moses decided to go in the presence of God, chapter 17. And it says here, and verses 9. And Moses said to Joshua, choose out men. Go out fight the Amalekites tomorrow, and I will stand on the top of the wheel with the, with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and the fought with the Amalekites. And Moses and Aaron and the whole went up on the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, the Israelites prevailed. And when he let his hands down, the Amalekites prevailed. This is very impressive. And the Lord said to me, the more we are going to be in his, in his presence lifting our hands, the more victories are going to be found in our businesses. Our cases. Look at Moses here. He's in the presence of God. Hallelujah. He's lifting his hands before God. And Joshua is getting victories wherever he is. Now, where is Joshua not getting victory? The Bible says, and when Moses' hands will go down, then Joshua will, will be defeated on the other side. As we prevail in the presence of God, we are going to live there with victories which can be seen. What about Jesus in Matthew 17, verse 1 to 4? Matthew 17 to 4. It is a very important thing, and it is very important for us to realize that even Jesus uh, took his disciples to the mountain and in the presence of God. Okay? And after six days, Jesus taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them to the high mountain apart. And there was three figures before them, and his feet those shine as sun, and his raiment was white as light, and John they appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. And the Peter and then and Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Hey, hallelujah. That is going to be a testimony of those going to come to the conference. They are going to say, it is good for us to be here. Okay? He said, it is, let us make, uh, let us debate here and determine about one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elias. What happened? They went to the presence of God. He took them. He took them to the mountain. He took them to the, to the presence of God. It is so important. Let me tell you, there are things you are not going to experience and if you are sent to the mountain of God. And God wants us to come in his presence. In the Old Testament, God said that men should appear before him three times a year. They were supposed to come and be in his presence. And our ministry here, by the grace of God, God instructs us that every year, these seven days, we need to be in his presence. And I want to tell you something, is that those who come in this presence, their lives are, tra are transformed. The Bible says, and these people, James and Peter, and John, 
When they went to that mountain and they were in the presence of God, they saw things which they had never seen before. They saw Jesus transformed and he became like the sun. In the presence of God, there are many things going to be revealed to us. And therefore God is inviting us to come to his mountain. He says in Isaiah 40, verse 38 to 42, he says, those who wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. It's so important for us, as the year time continues, to come in the presence of God, to wait upon God. Okay? Those seven days are days to wait upon God. You'll be coming here to wait upon God. You are coming here from morning to evening. Lord, I'm waiting upon you. I'm waiting upon you. I desire you. I want you. And it is a time to be in the presence of God. And I want to speak to you as we close the service. Prepare yourself to come in the presence of God. That he says. Hallelujah. It speaks to us that we need to come to that place of waiting upon the Lord, waiting upon Him. He will renew our strength. We shall hold up. Amen. This verse is 28, so not that it. Okay, 28. It says, Has thou known, verse 28, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the great of the hands, Faded no, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and uh, them that are not mighty still increases strength. Okay? Even the youth shall faint, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mold up with wings like the eagles. Hallelujah. Those seven days are going to be days of waiting upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Just coming in His presence from 24th, 26th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. We are here. Hallelujah. Amen. Not because we don't have anything else to do, but we have something to do. Hallelujah. Because that is what to do. Many people think work is cultivating. Ujimba eh? returns to the class. Some people think work is digging. Some people think work is busy, being with something. But there are many people, they don't know that even being in the presence of God is work. You can just be in the presence of God and give you, God gives you everything that you need to do to fix it everything. Okay? But you can spend the whole time, the Bible says, one day in His presence is better than a thousand. And this one they say, I would rather be a God they get keeper in his house and spend a day elsewhere. I believe that if it one day is better, then seven days are greater. And God wants us to determine ourselves. And they say, I have never been to church for seven days. Okay? I have never been to church for seven days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, this time, can you try to be the judge for seven days? What do you go wrong if you are in the judge for seven days? What do you think will go wrong? How come the, the tourists they close their business and they stay in the beach? And they are not waiting upon the Lord, they are waiting upon the Son. You know? For seven days, they are for a man. Amen? What, what is wrong with us after that? We must walk with the whole year. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. God wants us to take a holy day in His presence. And uh, there are ten reasons why God gathers us. One of them to instruct us. 
Okay, God will gather us to instruct us, and God will gather us, okay? He will gather us, he marked us, okay? There are ten reasons. I'm just going to mention them quickly because I have no time. But one of the reasons is God gathers us to instruct us. As we gather, he will instruct us. Hallelujah. God does not gather his people in vain, he will instruct us. Number two, God will gather us that we may hear his voice, okay? You hear his voice, okay? He gathers us, he says, Come them in his night, and they may hear my voice, okay? The next thing, God gathers us to impact us. He said to Moses, Gather 70 people, 70, okay? And then when he gathered them, he told them, Now take the spirit in you and put them in impartation. Hallelujah. There are men of God coming from all over the country, some of them from South Africa, and they are coming with something, some of them from Kenya. Amen. Like Bishop Tumis, he told me he's going to be here. Why are they here? To impact us. Hallelujah. God gathers us to impact us. Amen. Impartation. Amen. The other reason, or oh, that's what we call impartation, we also know the translation. Impartation is called transfer of anointing. That's what we call impartation. Transfer of anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. The other thing God uh, gathers us is to seek Him. That we may seek Him. To seek God. Amen. The other reason why God gathers us is, uh, is to, take a, 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 to, 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 to to take a position. God gathers us to take a position. And we may gather us to take our position. God gathers us that we may be able uh, to, to, to take, to, to fight. God gathers people to fight together. Amen. They are things to take action. God gathers us to take action. They are action God wants to take it. And God, the way God gathers us, He begins to take action. Hallelujah. The next thing is God gathers us to prepare us for the coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you know the final gathering shall be up there in the air. Hallelujah. <laughs> so these are just the gathering for the preparation of Jesus. The other thing, the other reason God, God gathers us to see his glory. God wants us to see his glory. So he gathers us. Hallelujah. And the last thing, God gathers us to give us hope. Amen. As God gathers us, he's going to give us hope. The someone is going to be healed. There are things going to be done as God gathers us. Please prepare yourself for the conference. Start preparing. Tell God to come. Hallelujah. You can spare time. I want to promise those who will be there for seven days that you're going to see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Shall we stand before God? Amen. Today we are team by courtesy of Safari and Catherine. So don't be in a hurry. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Be in his presence. Hallelujah. The other day I met somebody, eh? it's another pastor, and she told me, nowadays I go before God, not to tell him anything. I don't go before God really in any anything. I just go there to enjoy his presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you be like that? Yeah, you don't go there to tell him anything. I just want to be here, Lord. I feel nice to be in your presence. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? I have my wife telling me, I have not come to ask anything. I just want to be near you. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. I don't have any question. I just want to be near you. Amen. That's what God wants us to be, to come in his presence. Hallelujah. And can you imagine how it honors God when you close your business and you close your things and you close your phone to just to honor him and to be in his presence. I want to encourage us. Don't take this as for granted. Prepare yourself to be in the presence of God. And especially in this conference, I, I want us to pray before God. Ask God to pray, Lord, I want your presence. I want to come to your presence. I've been elsewhere. I've been, I've been with people. I have been with friends. I have been with my relatives. But this man, Lord, I want to come to your presence. I want to be there, Lord, even this time of seven days of conference. I want to just be here in the presence of God. I want to spend my time in the presence of God. I want to have a time with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Yes. 
Hallelujah. I know you give many people dates. Why don't you give the Lord a date? Tell Lord I give you this date. I want you to be. I want to be with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you are there, yeah, you are just saying, Lord, you are this your prayer. You are asking the Lord to give you this opportunity that you will be in his presence. There are things against you. There are many plans that are there. But you are asking God to give you that moment to be in the conference, to be in the presence of God. I want you to raise your hand before God. I want us to pray together that God shall give us the grace. The devil does not want you to be in the presence of God. That week, if you're going to go and the angles will be calling to the world of Kufa. There are many things that will be talked about. There will be so many disturbances. But I want us to pray that God will give us peace to be in His presence. Father, we are raising our hands. And we are saying, oh Lord, great for us this opportunity. Even Lord from 27, from 24, to 29, oh Lord. We want to come to your presence. We want to come and stay. Even for those seven days, oh Lord. That Father, we can close our feet, oh God. And repeat your house, oh Lord, my Father. For seven days, Father, I pray for those who are raising their hands. They are saying, Lord, they desire to be in your presence, oh Lord. Father, God, any disturbance, any issue, oh God, my Father, standing before them, that can hinder them from being in your presence. Take it away, Lord. And Lord, prepare us. Prepare our hearts, O oh Lord. Even as we dedicate our fasting to these 17 days, we dedicate our fasting. It shall not be hunger strike. It shall be time in your presence. It shall be a time to prepare. It shall not, Lord, my Father, be a torture, but it shall be dedicated. We dedicate our fasting before you. And we dedicate our preparation for our conference before you. Prepare us, O oh Lord, for this conference. And Lord, cause us to come. In your presence. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you came to this church today for your first time, or maybe you have been here and you are not born again. And you want to make a decision for Jesus. You are not born again. You say, Bishop, pray for me. I want Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be born again. I want to begin a walk with Jesus. Yes, I've, I've walked my way. Eh? And as I talk today, as I talk today, let me tell you. What Safari did here at San Kathleen, they were walking away from God. But they came back to God and God healed them and is healing them and everything. That is a testimony. Maybe you are here also and your things are not working. You are even making a state where you have lost hope. Mama things are not working for you. But you want Jesus. Say, Lord, put honor in my life. Just come. I want to pray with you. Maybe you are here. You can raise your hand wherever you are. You say, Bishop, pray for me. I need this Jesus. I need this Jesus to order my life. The way he has done for them, I want him to order my life. Yes, I see one hand. Anybody else? Raise it before God. Don't fear. Don't fear. This is a place for you. Hallelujah. Yes, I see two ones. Yes. Hallelujah. Just I want to request the Asha. Just call those people forward. Just come. I want to pray with you. Don't fear. Don't fear. Even me. I one day make a decision for Jesus. Just come. Just come. Hallelujah. There's two more. There's two more. Hallelujah. Just come. Hallelujah. Just the way you are. Jesus. One give you hope. One give you hope. Hallelujah. My brother, don't fear. Just come. My sister, don't fear. You need Jesus. Just come. I want to request you by the grace of God. Why things are not working in my life is because Jesus is not there. If Jesus comes to my life, you give your hope. You give your future. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Hallelujah. Yes. There's still somebody. There's still somebody or two. Who the Lord is speaking to them and say, come. Just walk forward. Don't fear. I rebuke that fear. Rebuke that fear in the name of Jesus. Every fear that is in you from coming. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my God. I am rest with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Just hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Things are not working for your life. Come. Come, my brother. I say, come. Come. Hallelujah. Come. Don't feel come. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.